We tend to think that we need many lights and spend a lot of money to be able to get creative, when in reality, you will get to practice way more your creativity when using just one light. So in today's video, I will show you how to achieve different looks using just one, and I will give you many tips to make your portraits more creative. If you have only one light, there are many things you can do in your photography studio to be able to achieve a variety of moods for your client or for yourself. This is something I had to get used to many years ago in London because at the beginning when I started, I couldn't afford more lighting. And now, even if I have more lighting, many times I shoot with one light because I learned very well how to use it creatively and now I don't feel sometimes I need more lighting, to be honest. There are many factors you have to master to be able to be versatile with just one light, and I'm gonna show you everything today. But first, if we share the same passion for photography and the creative industry, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I share weekly videos. And I'm starting my travels next month as a photographer around the world, and I'm gonna document everything. So yeah, make sure to subscribe and you click the bell button to be notified about my weekly videos. Which ones are the main factors? The first one would be position of the light. This one is the main one. The second would be the color of the backdrop. I play with this a lot. You don't need too many backdrops, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna explain later. You have to take into account as well the distance between the model and the backdrop. The outfits, this is a very crucial part I'm gonna explain as well. Props, as you saw at the beginning of the video, they are very important and they really add creativity to your photos. And towards the end of the video, I'm gonna give you pro tips to save money when you have only one light. And obviously I'm gonna tell you the gear I've been using for these photos because I'm sure you're quite interested because everyone asked me this. I switched from Canon to Sony for those new here. So yeah, I'm gonna tell you a couple of things that are quite interesting as well. The position of the light. I'm gonna keep it simple, okay? I'm gonna go first for Moody, which is my favorite. If you follow my work, you know that. The lighting, if it's too flat, is not gonna make the picture moody or dramatic. So my favorite, favorite, favorite setup is one light at 45 degrees angle. And actually, maybe you can see it now a little bit. This is more lit than the other side because I have the light here at 45 degrees. And what it does is create a beautiful lighting over your subject because instead of being flat, it's gonna accentuate the features, but not too much. So for male models, it works very well, and for female as well, to be honest. And the next setup I really love, and I've been doing for these photos, it's 90 degrees. And so many of you love this setup in previous photo shoots I had. You guys love this and ask me how I do it. And it's very simple, guys. So it's not overwhelming at all. You just have to put the lighting 90 degrees for your subject and that's it. You're gonna be able to lit this half and the other half is gonna be very dark. If there is lighting in that side, I do have some windows there, you can always put a black reflector to absorb the lighting. So you make sure there are not reflections here of the light. So you can do that. And for high key portraits, same thing to be honest, because for high key, many people, me included, I use a very flat lighting because I want everything super lit, right? And that works perfectly. But because I really like dramatic shots, even if I do high key portraits, I still like some shadows, at least in half of the face. So again, I still use 45 degrees angle. It works very well. The next would be the distance between the subject and the backdrop. This is as important as the position of the light. If I put myself very close from the light source and far away from the background, the background is gonna be way darker. So this is a mood you can go for. But then what you can do is, this is something I do a lot with music artists. I shoot a lot with music artists here in London and I love doing it this way because I like it a bit more and it's not as moody. You can put your subject close to the backdrop 
and then the light closer as well. So you're gonna be able to see like a circle in the backdrop and it's a bit more lit. There is more texture and three-dimensionality in the photo. Otherwise, it's just too black. This is my favorite way to do it, to be honest, because otherwise it's way too, too dark and I don't really like that sometimes. For self-portrait photography, I do it a lot. And this is the interesting part. If you don't have a black backdrop, even though I highly recommend you because I love it and it's not as expensive, to be honest. So my favorite material is paper. It lasts quite long if you take care of it. So if you don't have black, you can use a white wall. Almost 100% sure you have a white wall in your house. So this is something you can use as well. Or in your photography studio, you have one. So you put the model or the subject very close to the wall, you're gonna be able to lead everything, okay? This is something you can play with. But then, if you want to add three-dimensionality, I love that word, <laughs> you can put your subject farther away and then you can put the light 45 degrees and you can darken a bit the background, making it gray and something you can do as well, and this is something I do a lot, it's locating the model close to the key light and then rising the default field. So the background is gonna become darker and darker and darker. In my home photography studio, I don't have massive space and I still manage to make it quite gray, but if you have even a bigger studio, you can go farther away and sometimes you can even get a very black backdrop just playing with the light source and the distance. So this is key if you don't have too much budget for lighting. Choosing the right outfits. This is something many people ignore and you have no idea how important it is. I've been a fashion stylist in the luxury sector for almost 15 years and in London around five till I became a full-time freelance photographer and creative director. But these skills really helped me with my photo shoots because you have to choose wisely your clothing when you are shooting with a client depending on the lighting you are using, okay? So for example, if you are shooting with black backdrop, it's good to use dark clothing because otherwise the lighting is gonna reflect on it and it's gonna change completely the lighting of the whole photo. So make sure you shoot with dark clothing and neutral colors. And for high key portraits, you can do as I did right now in this video and in the self portraits, using white and matching the colors with the backdrop. I love doing that. It looks very good and very clean. Before I shoot with every client, I make sure I tell them what to bring and I want them to bring variety because depending on the lighting I'm gonna use or the position of the lighting or the backdrop, I'm gonna ask them to wear something different and it changes the whole image. Right now I'm working in an exclusive video for the members of my private community and it's a case study of one of my clients. She's a lawyer and she wants me to shoot her book cover. So I explain everything there. How to prepare the photo shoot, how I did the idea, how much I charge for that specific project and many more things for you to learn. So for those new here, I do have a private community where you can support my work for just a couple of coffees per month, where I share monthly exclusive videos, podcasts, tutorials, resources, and many more things. So I'm gonna put the link below if you're interested. I like to do case studies, guys, because this is a great way for you to learn how I plan my photo shoots, how I shoot, how much I charge, and all of this. So make sure you check it out below. Another way to get more creative using just one light is using props. Again, many people ignore this, but you give something to the model to play with, this is gonna help a lot and it's gonna create contrast in the image. For instance, in this photo shoot, I was using a rose and it's something super simple. You can get a rose from anywhere or a flower, whatever you want to get, to be honest. You don't even need to spend money and it's gonna look way better. I was creating contrast with the backdrop, doing moody photos. I think this is the perfect example because I used just one light and that rose for both the high key photos and the moody photos. And as you can see, I created a wide variety of shots using just one light and the prop really adds up because otherwise there would be normal headshots and they would be more boring. And I like creative portrait photography. <laughs> you follow my work, you know this. So props is a very crucial part. Bonus tips for more creativity. And you're gonna love this because I think they're gonna help you a lot. They did help me. I've been learning everything on the way. The first tip would be getting RGB lights. I know there are more lights, but if you buy pocket RGB lights, even if it's just one, you're gonna be able to change the mood of the photo and they are very, very, very cheap if you get just one. They are very affordable. Another option would be, if you don't want to buy lights, gels. Gels are incredibly good to change as well the color of the light and they are very cheap. You can get gels for 20 quid or even less maybe. So this is something you can do to change as well the color of the light without having to buy more lights. Shooting through things. You can shoot through anything you want. And this is something I do a lot because it adds creativity. 
and you can shoot through leaves, flowers or whatever you want. In this situation, I use a plastic bag because I was using my favorite lens of all times and I'm gonna tell you later more about it because I'm gonna explain the gear now. So that lens, you can shoot at f1.4. So putting the plastic bag, it creates this blurriness and this dreamy effect and it looks beautiful. So this is something you can do as well. And using just one light, you are offering more variety to your clients. And also something that it costs money, but you may have at home, to be honest, I don't know, it's using a projector. This is something I love doing with music artists. You can use any projection you want because you can even create them yourself. And this is more variety for your clients as well. So I think this is great. I love using projector, but I understand sometimes they are expensive, but you may have at home to watch films, you can use that. Now, the gear. The gear is up to you. You can use any gear you like, but I'm just gonna explain the one I've been using because many of you are gonna ask me. But anyway, in all the videos, I always put the gear I use below. And sometimes I get discounts. So I put the discounts as well if you like, guys. So everything is gonna be down below, but I'm gonna explain it. The first photos, the moody ones, were taken with the 7200 F2.8 G Master from Sony, the new one, and with my Sony A7R5. I recently switched from Canon to Sony, and I'm very happy about the switch. I love Canon, I have no problem with Canon, I was very happy with Canon. I explained in a video why I switched, and yeah, I'm not gonna get into that right now, you can watch the video later. But I'm very happy with it. And then the second photos, the high key ones, I shot them with the same camera, obviously the Sony A7R5. And with this beast, wait, I'm gonna show you the lens. And you can see the reflection there. It's massive, it's very big, it's <laughs> very heavy. And I'm gonna start traveling, as I told you at the beginning of the video. And I was doubting how I'm gonna carry this in my camera bag. It's incredibly heavy and very bulky. I'm also using the Sigma adapter because this Sigma was for Canon, but I bought the Sigma MC11 and it works perfectly out of focus, so I couldn't be happier. And after using it today for my self-portraits, I'm like, no way, I'm not leaving this behind. It's my favorite lens. I try many lenses. I shoot a lot of portrait photography and yeah, they are great. The 7200 is great as well. I'm very happy with it, don't tell me wrong. But this one, I love it. My favorite lens of all times. So yeah, cons, it's way too heavy, okay? It's, um, you have to go to the gym to train to carry this baby and it's very big. So I still don't know how I'm gonna carry it with me, but it's gonna come with me guys, because I know I'm gonna be traveling a lot and I wanna do collaborations with people around the world. So yeah, I'm not gonna leave it behind. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I will take it with me. And then tripod and accessories, I will link everything below. I've been using a continuous light as well with a very huge diffuser, you saw in the behind the scenes. As bigger the diffuser, the better the skin, okay? So I really like big diffusers. So the diffuser I have is from Newer, and you're gonna have it below, as I said, it's the affordable one. But this one, an expensive one, I have in Spain, that's why they didn't rebuy my stuff or send it here, because it's quite expensive to send it, to be honest. It's from Elinchrom, and it's my favorite reflector ever. I'm gonna link it below as well. I highly recommend you, if you had the budget, invest in the good one, in the one I'm gonna put, because there is, a massive difference between both, okay? Please, if you have the money, invest in a good one because also it's gonna be more durable. I'm gonna put both below. This does the job as well, so don't worry about that. You can get this one. But as always with photography, if you can invest, it's better. If you enjoyed this video, I do have a few others about lighting on my channel, so make sure to check them out and subscribe if you didn't yet and like the video because it helps me a lot. I will see you very soon. Big love.